Welcome back, students. In this lecture, we're going to talk about a plugin that's available for QGIS 3.0. And it's one that I just became aware of, and it wasn't available in any previous version of QGIS. And I've been playing around with it for a couple days, and I'm really impressed with it. And I wanted to let you guys know about it. And I'm always a little bit nervous when I say things like this, because the truth is I haven't used ArcGIS very much in a couple years. And it's such a huge program that it's certainly possible that there are features in it that I'm not aware of that I never use for one reason or another. So I'll just say that at least as far as I'm aware of, the capabilities of this plugin are not available in ArcGIS Desktop. If I'm wrong, maybe some of you will let me, be able to let me know. So let's go to the Plugins menu. We'll go to Manage and Install Plugins. And the name of the plugin is Data Plotly. And the short little description here is D3 Plots for QGIS. If you're a web programmer and you know JavaScript, you probably know what D3 is. It's a JavaScript library that allows you to visualize data with a lot of different kinds of charts and graphs and plots and things like that. And what this plugin does is it provides similar functionality in QGIS. And so I already have this plugin installed, so I'm just going to click this checkbox here to activate it. If you're doing this at home, you'll have to go ahead and install it first. It's just a button click. And then I hit close. And now when I go to my plugins menu, I see that I have right here an option for a data plotly. And again, I'll choose that option. And what that's going to do is open up a panel here on the side. And this panel is what we work with in order to create a plot from our QGIS data. And so the first thing that we have to choose is the type of the plot. You'll see we have options like a scatter plot, box plot, bar plot. Let's go with the box plot for now. And for the layer, we'll use, let's say, raptor buffer. And for the Y field, let's just choose fledglings. Then I'll click Create Plot. And there we get a graph. This box plot just shows the minimum, first quantile, median, third quantile, and maximum values. So it's pretty simple. Now we can change a few things like the color just to make it look pretty. We'll do light blue with a dark blue line. Then I'll click Update Plot. And there we can see a little bit more. And if we hover over it, we'll see the values also for the minimum first quantile, median, third quantile, and maximum. And we can change some things in here. For instance, in this setup, I can give it a title. We'll call it Fledgling by Status. And I'll leave the legend title blank. And the y-axis, I'll just call it Number of Fledglings. I can show statistics if I want. If I wanted to choose outliers by some standard method, I don't know exactly what the method is. You'll have to look in the documentation. There's a couple methods for choosing outliers. I'm going to leave it at no outliers for now. But I want to show the, at least the mean in here in addition to the median. I'm going to click Update Plot. And there you can see the mean is 4.47 and the median is 4. Looks like I have a spelling error there. I'll go back and change that real quick. So it's just basic descriptive statistics of a numerical value. Now the real power is that we can choose a field that we want to group by. So I'll say we want to group by the recent status and update plot. And then we'll see that there's actually some differences, probably statistical differences in the number of fledglings between inactive nests and active nests. And then for each group, we can see some of these summary statistics. And what's really cool is if I click on one of these, it's linked to this data. So if I click on one of these, I'll see all the inactive nests are highlighted. If I click on the active nest, then the active nests get highlighted, etc., etc. In fact, I can also have it use only the selected features. So if I click that on and then say I come in here and select just a certain area and update the plot, you see these values have changed. Now we're only looking at the data for just this area where it had the features that I just selected in. And so if you combine this with all the other methods that we've talked about for selecting features, so selecting features by spatial location and selecting features by attributes, you can do a lot of really powerful data exploration. Now something else that's really cool so if I click on this icon here, it'll take me right to the help information for the box plot. 
they don't tell you what all these different plot properties are and the plot customizations that you can add and all that kind of stuff. And you can just go back and click on the docs to get to the root of this helper information. You get a lot of just general information as well. Now I mentioned that D3 is a JavaScript library. And it turns out that under the hood, what we're really looking at here is this is actually just a browser window. And you can see the code behind the browser window by clicking this icon here. Again, if you're familiar with web programming, you'll recognize some of this. There's some information in the head, some links to some JavaScript files, and a bunch of data, and some JavaScript code down here. Now, why would you be interested in this? Well, if you're a web programmer and you wanted to add some graphing information to your web map, this would help you do this because you can see the code behind it, you can see the data, and from that you could figure out how to recreate this data for possibly other in queries within your web map. And that's pretty cool. So you can make a web map with a graph that's actually live. Now something else that you could do with this is if I just right click in here and click copy. So I've copied this entire web page information and it turns out that the print composer, if I look at this print composer that we have, one of the options that it has is an HTML frame. And so I could come over here and draw an HTML frame and in my source box I can come in and paste that code that I just copied and refresh my HTML. And just like that, I can put that information under a print composer map. And it's incredibly easy to change these things. Like, I just looked at the number of fledglings by recent status. But if I wanted to look at it by species too, I can just change the name of the field that I'm grouping under, update the plot, and now I'm looking for differences between Swainson's hawks and red tail hawks. Now another thing you'll notice is that we can work with not just field values, we can work with expressions. And so let's change the layer to the Buell buffer. We'll change the group field to recent status. And now instead of a layer, we're going to use an expression. And I already know what I'm going to use. It's one that you've seen before. I'm just going to use the area, but it's going to give us the area in square meters. So I'm going to divide the area by 10,000 to give us hectares. So just like that, now a box plot shows us the minimum and maximum, median and average size of these Buell habitats by recent status. Now we could change that really quickly to a bar plot if we wanted to. If we want to see a histogram, that'll just give us a count of features based on their recent status. We can do that very easily. We can do pie charts. You can take a look at the documentation and if you're interested in learning more about some of these other types, polar plots, ternary plots, etc. But the take home message is that this gives us a lot of ability to visualize our spatial data in a lot of really interesting ways. And the combination of being able to work with selections and expressions and all the other features that we've come to know and love in QGIS 3.0 makes it a really powerful and welcome addition in my opinion. And I'm really impressed with what I've seen so far and I'm really looking forward to putting it through the ringer with some real work over the next few days. So thanks for listening. If you want to learn more about some of the great new features of QGIS 3.0, for just more about QGIS in general, I have an entire course available on Udemy called QGIS 3.0 for GIS Professionals. This course has over 9 hours of content and more than 70 different lectures, of which this is only one. And this is not a beginner course, it assumes that you're familiar with GIS concepts, and that you're primarily interested in learning how to perform the tasks that you already do in other software in QGIS. And even though QGIS 3.0 has not officially been released yet, you can download and use their release candidate now from the QGIS.org website. Now I also have three other courses available on web programming if you're interested in that topic. The first is an introduction to the basic concepts of web programming, but focused on geospatial technologies. You'll get an introduction to HTML, CSS, JavaScript, PHP, and SQL. But more importantly, you'll gain an understanding of how they all work together to create a web-based GIS application. You'll also get introduced to some geospatial-specific libraries, APIs, and extensions like Leaflet, TurfJS, and PostGIS. The second course is a more in-depth look at the Leaflet JavaScript library for creating web maps and analyzing spatial data in the browser. The third course looks specifically at adapting web GIS applications for use on mobile devices. 
including working with device sensors and dealing with situations where you have no data available. And in the next few months, I'll have courses available on PostGIS and server-side programming as well. So if you have interest in any of these courses, please go to udemy.com and you can use the coupon code COURSE4 to register for any of these courses for only $20. And if you want more information about these courses or other geospatial topics, you can check out my blog at the address above or just Google Geospatial Brainstorming.